Welcome back guys, Everything Apple Pro here. So excited, three months to go, the 13 and 13 Pro will be a reality. Now it's been a dry few weeks, but I got a good amount of leaks for you, some exclusives with Max Weinbach, and Apple's been on the offensive again against leakers. It hasn't been easy. A reliable leaker, Kang, has been hit by Apple's lawyers, amongst others, and he's warning other leakers to be cautious not to cause trouble. The only reach out I've gotten is when Apple's PR guy told us our render sucked and their engineers would gather around and laugh at them that we should stop making the leaks. Maybe we'll get review units. There you go, now you have it. Anyways, with that being said, let's get into the leaks. Now, as you know, we're trying to build something big and our next release with Phone Rebel is the Flex series. We've worked on this one for over a year. It has been a grueling design process, but we are so happy with the final result. It's sharp, it looks good from every angle, it's comfortable and it incorporates a lot from Gen 1 back into this modern design. I hope you guys will love it. This stuff is not cheap to make, and with this release, Gen 3, we need money for molds. So we're running our first sale on Gen 2 products, $5 off with the promo code HAPPY4. Thank you for supporting guys and helping us build the dream. Let's get into those leaks. First off, the iPhone 13 lineup dummies are now available. They show the final design lenses, how they're going to be on the final product, and case manufacturers use these testing, whatnot. And uh, yeah, they do confirm the diagonal camera orientation is real and happening on the 13 and soon to be deceased 13 mini. Sonny Dixon shares a better lineup image, which shows us that yes, the 13 Pro Max is getting a gargantuan lens matched by the 13 Pro, which is basically almost the same size, half a millimeter smaller. First one from Max, he confirms again that portrait mode video is happening and will be baked into the camera application on the new iPhones, like we saw in iOS 15 with portrait video for FaceTime, little preview of that. And an interesting tidbit Max mentions, the wireless charging coil on this year's iPhones will be getting slightly bigger. Now it's very possible this is to compensate for the stronger MagSafe magnets, which Max leaked earlier. It'll be better for heat management and for higher wattage. So we might get faster charging through wireless. And it's very possible he speculates that this could be used to initiate reverse wireless charging a feature notably missing on Apple's latest iPhones. Latest report from Ming-Chi Kuo mentions that the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max will be receiving autofocus on an upgraded ultra-wide lens. Something you reported earlier, now confirming, and uh, something I definitely wish I had on my 12 Pro Max. Alongside upgraded low light performance and sensor shift stabilization, Apple is primarily focusing on the ultra-wide camera. And Quo mentions that autofocus for the ultra-wide lenses will be extended to the base model iPhones next year. And by the way, he confirms the 5.4 inch or the mini is dead. Not coming back next year, Apple is sticking to a 6.1 and 6.7 form factor. Again, they're introducing a new 14 Max. So basically the iPhone 14 Pro Max with less camera features and no in-screen Touch ID. In that same report, Quo mentions, next year's iPhones very well may get Touch ID. Maybe the entire lineup, maybe limited to the Pro models, but Touch ID is entirely still on the table. And speaking of the mini, according to TrendForce, the iPhone 12 mini has been discontinued or reached end of life ahead of time due to very, very poor sales. And while we're on the topic of Touch ID, it's very possible that future iPhones, maybe budget models, could have Touch ID in the power button. So Apple has updated the patent for Touch ID in the power button on the iPad Air and extended it to the iPhones, making it very clear that they want that path open should they choose to add it to maybe the SE Plus, which was rumored. Going back to the iPhone 13, TrendForce published an extensive report detailing all the specs, what we're expecting to see with the iPhone 13s, and they're pretty much in line with everything we've heard. Basically, that we'll be seeing a smaller notch, 120 hertz on the Pro models, LiDAR will be exclusive to the Pro models, and all four models will be getting sensor shift stabilization on the ultra wide sensors. What's new is they're referring to this year's release as the 12S, not the 13. Whether or not we'll be seeing a 13 based on superstitious reasons, I don't know, but it does make sense as it's not a very large update for Apple to call it the 12S. And in a survey conducted with 3000 people, it seems that 74% wanna see a name other than 13. And in that same survey, iOS 15 apparently is boring and there's just not enough to be exciting. Gotta say, I agree with that now that I've spent some time with iOS 15. Not too many groundbreaking things 
get you excited to update. And contrary to other reports, Trendforce says that one terabyte will not be happening. The Pro models will be limited to 512 and the 13 and 13 mini to 256. And Trendforce reports that the pricing is staying the same. So 699 starting for the mini, going all the way up to 1099 for the 13 Pro Max. I guess that's good news, not seeing a price increase despite the inflation and what's going on lately. And according to Dan Ives from Wedbush, he claims that we'll be seeing an event in the third week of September, which basically equals September 14th, as Apple usually holds their events on Tuesday. That would be the 14th very, very soon here. Dan's earlier reports were the ones about one terabyte storage and LiDAR on all the models. So it'll be interesting to see these toss-ups. And Apple is making good time on production. Digitimes reports that Apple is preparing everything, pulling all components together. They're almost ready to begin full-scale production. Now with the Apple A15, Apple is going to a five nanometer refined platform. And according to Nikki Asia, we'll be seeing three nanometer next year. First debuting on the iPad, and they're saying it's not coming to the iPhone right away. We'll first see a four nanometer version before three nanometer, maybe in a couple of years or so. The improvements between five and three nanometers in power performance are 10 to 15% and a reduction of power consumption by 25 to 30. And last tidbit from Quo, he reiterates that on the iPhone 14, we'll be seeing an upgraded wide angle camera with a 48 megapixel sensor. So most of the major camera advancements are happening next year. As always, the greatest stuff is coming tomorrow, but buy what you need today and be happy with it. And Quo has reported on the upcoming iPhone SE 3, I guess you can say, and apparently it'll be the cheapest 5G smartphone ever. Arriving early in 2022, this will have the same chassis as the existing iPhone SE with likely just improved internals and antenna to support 5G. And Quo mentions that regarding the iPhone SE Plus, he hasn't heard anything. He reported on it earlier. It's a six inch iPhone 11 update, which we're likely to see in 2023 with Face ID and of course upgraded internals with 5G. Last one on the iPhone. Once again, Apple continues to push for an iPhone that works with water on the display with custom modes such as dry mode, underwater mode, wet mode, and this mode will detect various modes of being submerged and you can use it underwater entirely. Apple's been working on this for the longest time. I really can't wait for it to be a reality. A new report by Mark Gurman of Bloomberg on the Apple Watch Series 7 gives us more details. He confirms that yes, it will have a redesign. So a squared chassis, which is likely to be thicker, but not noticeably so. When you're dealing with a square body, it, it changes the proportions, so I totally get that. And he mentions that the bezels will be getting slimmer, and Apple is working on reducing the space in between the display and the outer glass with a new lamination technique. He mentions a faster processor and a built-in ultra-wideband chip for support of AirTag and various other ultra-wideband devices. And a report from Digitimes on the Apple Watch Series 7 chip says it'll be using a double-sided process system and package and a smaller chip size overall. And a supporting report by Economic Daily News mentions that Apple is prioritizing battery life over anything else on the Apple Watch. So health sensors, which they originally planned for this device, they will not be doing. It's all about the battery life on the Apple Watch this year. One of those sensors that Apple emitted this year is a body temperature sensor, according to German. They weren't able to make it happen, so they delayed it into future Apple Watch. They were also trying for glucose monitoring, and German says that will not be happening for at least a few years. It's very difficult. And an interesting part of German's report is that Apple is working on a rugged version of the Apple Watch, something they wanted to release for Gen 1, never got around to it, more impact resistant, more water resistant, and more sand resistant. Something like Casio, Casio, uh, G-Shock watches. He also mentions that Apple is working on a successor to the Apple Watch SE model, which we could see this year, potentially next year. And a recent Apple patent shows us that Apple is working on many different types of ways on adding new health sensors to the Apple Watch through bands. By the way, this uh, Apple Watch Series 3 prototype, super cool. It had extra pins for testing with various smart bands. And Apple is also looking to add new health sensors to AirPods. In line with this, Ming-Chi Kuo mentions that AirPods Pro 2 arriving next year will have new motion sensors inside. It's very possible we'll see other health sensors as previously reported. And Economic Daily News mentions that AirPods 3 are still likely happening this year and various suppliers are gearing up to produce AirPods 3. So you can probably expect those around September. And that's the latest Apple news. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next one. 
So excited. Peace.